I would like to welcome you all to Rotary Club of Salmania weekly meeting. Special welcome to Her Excellency CDA, uh, Maggie Nardi, and uh, it's a pleasure to have her with us today, and she will shed some light on the Bahraini-American relationship challenges and opportunities. I wanted to take this opportunity to review what has happened in the past year uh, here with bilateral relations. There have been a lot of changes, of course, with COVID and other things as well. We have had some great achievements and we have some new opportunities going forward. So Bahrain has been a regional leader forever uh, with you know, a Hindu temple that's almost 200 years old, a synagogue that's almost 100 years old, uh, in the same street as a mosque and a church, and you just don't find that anywhere else in the region. That's something very special about Bahrain, and I think that His uh, Majesty King Hamad's decision to normalize relations with Israel is just another representation of the kingdom's peaceful coexistence in the region. You know, the king looked at 72 years of attempts to bring about peace and through successive U.S. administrations, Republican and Democrat, coming close a number of times but never succeeding. And in the meantime, Israel con uh, continues to build settlements and then there was the threat of annexation. So I, I believe that there is a feeling by uh, a number of countries that something has to change and without a change, um, the annexation could happen, these settlements will continue and the opportunity for a separate Palestinian state uh, will dwindle. Uh, Bahrain is also doing its part uh, when there was the threat from Iranians or harassment of ships by Iran last summer. Uh, Bahrain was the first country to sign up for the International Maritime Security Construct, which is a group of eight countries that help to patrol the Gulf and the Strait to make sure that ships can get through freely. Um, and we appreciate their support. That's another area where Bahrain is a leader. In the area of trade, as you all know, Bahrain is one of only two countries in the Gulf with which the U.S. has a free trade agreement. Uh, Bahrain has attracted over 200 U.S. companies to locate their operations here. Uh, and we are constantly trying to attract more interest. Uh, more recently, since uh, the onset of COVID, a number of U.S. companies tried to do what they could to contribute to the kingdom's uh, counter-COVID strategy. Uh, and we're continuing to look for new opportunities. We will um, continue working with the Commercial Law Development Program on ways to improve contracting and uh, impl uh, implementation of the insolvency law. We are also getting our American Chambers of Commerce to work together and the foreign commercial services, the commerce arms that are located in Riyadh and in the Emirates. So trying to make more of a regional effort so that if we see that there are some opportunities for Bahraini companies here uh, that are originating in these other countries, then we will try to make connections. Uh, also with the, the announcement of the Regional Small Business Federation that I understand will be hosted in Bahrain, uh, we are going to look to see if there are more opportunities to bring the American Small Business Association here to try to do some joint engagements and facilitate that given the large number of small businesses in Bahrain. So we will continue to look for ways to, uh, to expand our partnership and also a big focus for us on the free trade agreement is making sure that Bahraini companies benefit from this. So to that end, we did have a series of five seminars and these were targeted to women primarily um, about how they can use the tools allowed under the free trade agreement in order to export their products to the United States. When this sort of talking about business and also talking about uh, the education uh, gets me to think about visas. So you may have heard that in August, we announced an agreement that we've made with the Bahraini government to begin um, issuing 10 year multiple entry visas to Bahrainis and Bahrain will do the same for Americans. Once the COVID positive numbers go down and stay down, we hope to be able to uh, expand those services so that we can uh, resume normal visa operations. The number of 
Americans that we can bring here to work with Bahrainis, it has also increased the audience size for some of our programs because people who wouldn't have been able to physically uh, come to an event can do so online. So there have been some pros and cons, but this has definitely been a challenging year.